Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg and I am here today to do a Friday Reads video in a sort of different way. Usually I have other things that I kind of talk about in my Friday Reads video before I get to the Friday Reads portion, which is where I talk about the week in reading and the things that I read and finished or am reading up to this point. I'm going to do things a little differently this time. I also have not really done a dedicated video about my worst reads of the year. I've kind of folded it into my Friday reads for, I think, the last two years. And I always feel weird about doing that because I feel like when I talk about the books that I'm currently reading, they in inevitably get lumped in. Like, if you watch the video, you don't really get confused about what's part of what I'm currently reading and what are the worst reads. But I think even last year... I mentioned, I, I did like my usual thumbnail image uh, where I had just the pictures of the books that I was currently reading and called it Friday Reads, the worst books of the year. So in hindsight, it looks like the books in the photo are the worst. So I'm not doing a Friday Reads, Friday Reads. I'm handing the Friday Reads portion of this over to talk about the worst reads that I, books that I read in 2022. And actually 2022 was a pretty good reading year. I would say. There weren't really any books that I hated. There were just some duds. And I know there are a lot of people who kind of think about whether or not they do. They, they feel like doing a worst is overly negative and maybe you shouldn't do it. I feel like it's only fair. If you talk about the books that are really good, inevitably there are books that are bad. I am just going to preface by saying none of these books I would say are terrible. They just really didn't hit me in good ways. So before we get to the worst re books of 2022, according to me, uh, I will quickly note, I've still been sick. I've now been sick since before Christmas. Today I'm feeling a little better. That is a relief. But uh, it's been a long road. Um, and that's been annoying. It's not COVID, it's not the flu, but it is just a lingering cold, which is a little bit miserable. I, I still have a cough drop in my mouth, which you might notice. And um, things have been going a little slowly because of that. And next week, when I do my my more typical Friday reads, I'll talk about the books that I finished 2022 with, which are The Sheep Queen by Thomas Savage and The 30 Names of Night by Zane Jukadar, and what is likely going to be the first book that I finish in 2023, which is Enter a Murderer by Nao Marsh. Um, I'm also listening to the audio of All This Could Be Different by Sarah Tankum Matthews, and we'll talk about those next week. I will add, before we get into the worst, that we did finally try Kindred, the new Hulu adaptation of the book by Octavia Butler. And I think it's appropriate that I'm mentioning this in the worst of 2022, although we're into 2023 at this point. I bailed after the first episode. Joel might finish. He will probably continue with the series and see what develops. I really hated the first episode. And that was a big surprise for me. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that they make some very significant changes to the book. And I suppose over eight episodes, they might play out. However, and none of this is a spoiler because it all happens in the first episode. Um, the protagonist's mother is back on the plantation, which... It not only is not in the book, but it adds a layer of... Like, in the book, it doesn't explain why she time travels back to the plantation or how this starts. But now in the show, it adds this layer of, like, is this a genetic thing? Is this a family thing? I don't know. And it fundamentally changes the book. Also, and somebody had mentioned this to me. She's not married in the show but not only that, so they're dating, but they've just met. Like, they literally meet in the first episode. And again, that fundamentally changes the, the dynamic of their relationship. And I don't see how it works. Again, maybe if you watch the rest of the episodes, it might work. Um, they also add nosy neighbors. Like, cliche nosy neighbor characters. And they add, like, the neighbor's cat and have... <laughs> I didn't like it. So we bailed on that really quickly. Um, 
Joel asked, well, do you want to bail? And I said, no, let's try the second episode. And then the beginning of the second episode, I didn't even make it five minutes in because it opens with like the nosy neighbors. And I was like, I can't. You know what? I can't. So that was a disappointment, a total disappointment. Um, I had really been looking forward to the adaptation and I don't think I can do it. I think I'm just going to have to leave it alone and uh, not... I'll let Joel tell me if it gets any better. But uh, if that's how they handled the first episode, I was really looking forward to an adaptation of the book. And this seems pretty fundamentally different. And not in ways that I find interesting or that I thought were handled well either. It also adds a lot of her family backstory that's not in the book and doesn't really touch on the backstory from her family that is in the book. And I don't know. I I just couldn't do it. So we'll leave it at that. If you have watched more than just one episode, let me know what you were th thought of the series in the comment section down below. I'm going to put this down. I have just fidgeting with it nonstop. So it's down. <laughs> um, and now without further ado, let's move into... My worst books of 2022. They don't have to be new books. However, most of them actually are new books. So I am going to divide this into three different categories. And then we'll talk about the books that I definitively DNF'd in 2022. Uh, they're not necessarily bad books, but I DNF'd them. There were not actually many. So I, I feel like we can cover them in this video. Uh, actually, let's cover the DNFs first. So the ones that I am definitively DNFing and not go planning to revisit are The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. I have not liked too many of her newer books. I prefer her older books. So, But I've, I've never DNFed a Louise Erdrich book before. I just really was not into this at all. And that so that was disappointing. However, I don't feel any urge sense or need uh, to pick it back up. I think I'm just going to leave it as is. If it had won a major literary prize last year, maybe I would feel like I should revisit it at some point. I don't feel like I need to revisit it. Uh, but for a different perspective, you can check out Sean the Book Maniac. I know he loved this book. The next one that I DNF'd was a bit of a surprise. It was The Wrong End of the Telescope by Robbie Alamedine. This was something that I had really been looking forward to after I saw it on the ALA Notable list from last year. And because it is about a transgender doctor, I got it from the library and I had a really hard time getting into it. And I thought it was just because of like, like where I was at mentally at that point. So I put it down for a week, picked it back up and was still struggling. And I realized there's the tone of the book I just really wasn't vibing with. Like the approach of the character and the way things were going down. So I... Wait, I kind of kept trying until it was due back at the library. And at that point, I put it back. And I at that time, I kind of thought to myself, you know what, I'll try again later. And when it came to the end of the year and I saw it listed as a book that I had not finished, instead of thinking, oh, yeah, I want to get back to that book, I thought, oh, I don't want to get back to that. So I'm not going to. Uh, the other one that I DNF'd really hard was Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. And I know a lot of people count this as one of their favorite books of 2022. So, you know, take my opinion with a grain of salt. I really did not like it. And part of it is that I was kind of set up for one kind of story and I got something very different. I was set up for a story about a woman who got a job cleaning an aquarium, who meets an octopus, and then you have her narration, and then the octopus has narration as well, and they form a sort of uh, surprising friendship. That's what I expected, and that is there. However, the bulk of the story is taken up by her grandson or her nephew or something like that, and he's just this white guy who can't get his life together, and I am really not into stories like that right now. And... His story was actually the focus of the book, and I really didn't like it. I wasn't into it, so I put it down and uh, have no plans to revisit it at some point. But a lot of people have loved the So, again, take my opinion with a grain of salt. Maybe uh, your mileage would vary if you picked it up instead of me. 
And then the final book that I DNF'd in, which will stay a DNF, is American War by Omar el Akkad. I was reading it for a specific prompt for Montana Book Company's Reading Challenge, uh, a, a dystopia that feels real. And it felt a little too real and was really stressing me out toward the end of the year. So I put it down. And the writing was great. So this is not an instance where I think the, the book was bad. It was a very good book. It was just really stressing me out. And for that reason, I put it down and I, I don't have any plans to get back to it, at least not anytime soon. Um, there are two other books that I did not finish in 2022. However, they don't count for this prompt. I am going to hold one of them up. It's a very good book, actually. It's The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois by Honoré Fanon Jeffers. I did not finish this in 2022, but it's not a DNF that I'm going to talk about in this video because I plan to get back to it. I really desperately want to get back to it, and I'm hoping that I will in the beginning of 2023. Um, I'm actually kind of thinking I have two plans for February that would kind of fit in with Black History Month, and this is going to be one of them. So I'm hoping to get some year-end wrap-up things out of the way in January, and then by February I want to be back at this. So I didn't finish it in 2022. However, I plan to. Uh, and the other one, I haven't decided if I'm going to give it up completely or not, and it was a, a recommendation from someone. So I I had been trying it as an ebook from the library and wasn't responding to it, the audio is now available on one of my subscription apps. So I think I'm going to try the audio. And if I don't respond to it that way, I'm just going to give up. And we'll see how that goes. So technically, it's not a DNF, like a permanent one at this point either. And uh, if it does become one, I'll, I'll talk about it. Um, but until then... So the next category is the big one. Let's just jump to the big one and talk about what I'm going to say were my worst reads in 2022. Both of them are books that were published in 2022. The first one is Less is Lost by Andrew Sean Greer. I had a whole rant review of this video, or book rather. I will put a link to that video in the description box down below if you would like to check it out. I... Liked less the book that this is a sequel to more than I thought I would. However, I do have problems with it. But I think mostly it works. I would never have given it a Pulitzer Prize for Fiction, which it did win. But, you know, it's fine. And I, I didn't really let myself get angry about it. And then this is a follow-up to the book less. And I just don't think it was necessary at all. I think it leans into some of the more annoying or even problematic things about less. And sometimes the writing is too clever. Like I remember one of the things I point out in the video uh, down below is at one point, Arthur Less uh, is it's the described, there was a lesbian noise and then Arthur turns and there's just a crowd of people. And I remember thinking, what is a lesbian noise other than something that just sounds vaguely amusing? So I didn't like this. I didn't like this at all. I understand that some people who maybe were bigger fans of Less might enjoy it, but I feel like it shouldn't exist. It, 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 our, Andrew Sean Greer would have been better off just going in a different direction because revisiting Arthur Less really diminishes the even the original book, I think. And the same is true for the other book that I'm going to call one of my worst reads of 2022, which is Tracy Flick Can't Win. There's no reason for this book to exist. It's by Tom Perota. And it's particularly disappointing. I did another whole video on this one, and I'll link that down below as well. But it's particularly disappointing because I haven't liked some of Tom Perota's recent work, and I really felt like he keeps doing the same thing, and he needs to try something different to sort of jolt him out of his senses. And unfortunately, instead of trotting new ground, he wrote a sequel to probably, arguably, his most famous book, which is Election, and introduces the character of Tracy Flick. Of course, now Reese Witherspoon is going to star in an adaptation of this book. I am not looking forward to that at all because I just don't think this is... I don't think this book justifies the need for a sequel all these years later. I think it toys with some interesting ideas about, like, Me Too 
And then it doesn't do anything with them. It doesn't actually want to grapple with them. And then uh, in typical Tom Perota fashion, it brings in a football hero and doesn't really do anything interesting or different with that character. And it does things with the arc of Tracy's life that I don't think makes sense. And again, I have a whole video where I talk about it more at length when I was m much closer to having read the book. So it was all m much fresher in my mind. But I think... It's probably telling in an era where a, a lot of new movies are based on IP. Uh, it feels like it's probably fitting that, and I'm not a huge fan of that, if you can't tell. Uh, it's probably fitting that my least favorite books that I read in 2022 are basically the same thing. Kind of retreads of things that didn't need a second installment. Um, and the way they turned out really bore that out. In terms of biggest disappointment, which is the next category I want to talk about, uh, really two books came to mind. One of them, because for me, for a book to be a disappointment, it has to be something you were really excited for and it has to be something that you were really looking forward to. And um, I wasn't looking forward to Less Is Lost. I wasn't looking forward to Tracy Flick Can't Win. I thought about Young Mungo because that was sort of a disappointment to me, but I think Young Mungo is fine. It's a good book. I just didn't like it anywhere near as much as Shuggy Bane. So it's not really a disappointment for me. But I went back to my list of books I was most anticipating in 2022, and uh, The Boy with the Bird in His Chest by Emmy Lund was on that list, and I did read it, and I didn't like it. And I... I, I it feels like punching down to talk about it. Like, it, I really didn't like it. I thought it was sort of cliched. It has an original idea in there. It doesn't end up doing anything really interesting with it. Uh, it's sort of a magical realism story that conflates LGBTQ plus or trans identity with um, a character who literally has a bird growing in his ribcage. Um, but it does. it's just sort of a cliched teenage story in the end about a teenager who's sort of dissatisfied with their life and you know makes mistakes and I it feels like punching down to talk about it harshly because it's I think it was a debut book it's a lesser known book um your mileage may vary maybe you would enjoy this book more than I did um but I didn't enjoy it it, and it definitely was a disappointment given how excited I was to read it when I first heard about it. The other one I have is another thing I have a full review on, which I will also link down below. It's The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. And that's just a disappointment, again, that I was so underwhelmed by this book given how much I loved Hamnet. I loved Hamnet. It was one of my favorite reads in the year in which I read it. I think about it a lot, and I had been very excited to read other books by Maggie O'Farrell, and I just wasn't into this one. It, it feels like she has a very similar idea to what happens in Hamnet, where she takes a figure, a female figure from history, and whose story has been remembered by the men she was associated with. Um, and sort of imagines a life for her and what may have led up to her having just a short life. Um, and it just handles that idea, I think, in clumsy ways. And again, I have a whole video down below where I talk about it at greater length. But what a shock, what a disappointment that this is one of my most disappointing reads of 2022 because I was so excited for this book. And on, I, I think I may even get rid of my copy of the book because I see it on the shelf and I just kind of like, ugh, I feel the shock and disappointment all over again. Uh, but I was really not into this one at all. The next and final category in my worst books of 2022 is Nothing Burger, a book that ultimately almost doesn't even exist <laughs> for me anymore. And that's Mercury Pictures Presents by Anthony Mara. Basic. I read that. I think I finished it, and I got nothing out of actually finishing it. 
it's another book that sounds interesting based on the description of it. However, there's so much else that goes on in the book. It's sort of described as a story about a woman who, uh, as a child, had been taken from fascist Italy with her mother. She ends up in the United States and ends up in a sort of a censorship battle in Hollywood. And that sounded interesting, especially since it's sort of set in the lead up to World War II. And you have the idea that uh, she is able to use the experiences of her family. Her father ran afoul of Mussolini's government. Um, she's able to use her experience with them and the way they censored the people uh, to sort of do the opposite, to push movies past censors. Um, but she ends up being just a minor character. The book keeps adding characters and keeps fanning out. And the more it adds characters and the more it fans out, the more it loses focus. And ultimately, it just does not work and becomes completely uninteresting to me, especially since a lot of the characters in the book are extremely, I would say, uninteresting. And that is the overall impression that the book leaves me with, which is why... I remember the one plot line, but I honestly couldn't really tell you much about this book at all but at this point. And I, it, it, when I looked back at the books that I read in 2022, it is the one that immediately I said, oh, right, that's the thing I read this year, which is why it is the only appropriate uh, selection for the category of Nothing Burger. So not to be overly negative, although this is kind of a negative focused video, again, I think there is room for anyone to pick up any of these books, including The Marriage Portrait, and have a much better experience than I did. They just either hit me the wrong way, or I didn't really like the way they were done, or the way the author approached the subject. Um, your mileage may vary. So if you enjoyed these books, make a case for why you think I'm wrong. Politely, please, in the comment section down below. If you would like to tell me what your worst reads of 2022 were, please let me know that in the comment section down below. If you have any thoughts about Kindred, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I really appreciate your time. We'll be back with a regular Friday Reads next week. And until then, happy reading.